Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the channel. My name is Michael for Corvette Forum, and today I am here at American Heritage Performance. So I wanted to introduce you Coley, who owns the shop. Hello. Today we're doing a 2020 C8 Corvette, brought to us by one of our really good customers. Um, we're gonna be doing a fab feed exhaust install and a high wing install. Um, high wing's really gonna change the look of the car, and the fab speed exhaust really should help the car sound the way it looks. Right now they're a little quiet for most owners' likings. We, we just did a decibel meter on the stock system in track mode, and that was inside here too, so with lots of echoing things. Correct. Yeah, we're 93, I think is what I saw. Oh, you saw 93. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 93. So it's it idling around 70. Yeah. Legal here in California, but um, might change that just, just a touch. Okay, guys, let's break down the steps of a C8 Corvette catback install and or high wing spoiler install. The great news is that both of these jobs are relatively simple and can be done with hand tools. But it's also a good idea to grab a friend so you don't end up scratching the rear bumper cover or drop the muffler or the new catback that you're installing. Preparation. Disconnect the battery. Not everyone will do this, but anytime you're fiddling with electronics on modern cars, it's probably a good idea to disconnect the negative battery terminal. The C8 Corvette's battery is located in the front trunk compartment, aka the frunk. To access it, simply remove the two side pieces of plastic molding that surround the frunk, then lift up on the larger center plastic cover and disconnect your negative battery terminal. Part 1. Removing the rear bumper cover. To remove the rear bumper cover, Go ahead and take off your rear wheels first. This will give you clearer access to the rear wheel well liners and a few of the bolts and T15 torque screws. Next, you need to remove several T15 torque screws that run along the top of the rear bumper cover and the rear edge of the trunk. There are also a few 7mm bolts placed around the edges of the bumper cover. Don't forget to remove the plastic mud flaps in the wheel wells because under the wheel well liners, you'll find more bolts. On the driver's side, you'll find two 7mm bolts and one 10mm bolt under the liner. It's the same on the passenger side, but the 10mm bolt is hard to get to because it's tucked in behind the charcoal evap canister. You'll actually need an assortment of extensions and swivels to reach this one. With the bumper now loose, grab that friend, lift up on the rear bumper cover, and lift rearward, but remember you have to disconnect three electrical connectors that power things like your reverse sensors, cameras, and your tail lights. Then go ahead and remove the bumper cover and set it down on something soft. At this point, you can either install your catback exhaust or do a spoiler swap. We're gonna stay focused on the exhaust, but the spoiler part is coming up soon. Part two, remove the engine bay access panel and disconnect the catback from your headers and catted pipes. To disconnect the catback from the headers, you'll first need to access the engine bay from the trunk compartment. To do this, you first need to remove the fabric trunk liner. If you have a coupe, you'll also re need to remove the latches that secure the target top when you place it in the trunk. With the trunk liner removed, there are about 20-25 T15 torque screws around the edges of the plastic cover that you'll need to remove. FYI, this is also the cover you need to remove if you ever want to change your engine's air intake filter. Once you remove that panel and you have access to the engine bay, it's very easy to disconnect the suitcase from the header slash cat piping. There are two bolts on the driver's side pipe and three bolts on the passenger side. Part three, remove the OEM suitcase muffler. Again, this job is relatively simple, but you probably want a friend to help. First, make sure to disconnect all four plugs going into the electric motors that are mounted to the suitcase muffler system. Two of these are part of the active valve system, which change volume, and the other two are part of the active fuel management system, so as part of the cylinder deactivation or displacement on demand system. There are four hangers that hold the suitcase in place, two in the rear and two on the sides. We found that you can simply slide the rubber isolators off the two side hangers and then loosen the four bolts holding the two rear hangers until they're just about free, so they're just holding up the suitcase. Then grab your friend, and together as you're both supporting the suitcase, undo those four bolts the rest of the way, and you can now pull the suitcase aside and set it down. Part four, prep your catback exhaust for installation. Now this is obviously going to vary by manufacturer, so be sure to check your specific instructions. In this case, we're installing the Fab Speed catback exhaust, and it arrived in three pieces. One actual X-pipe and two active valve mufflers with dual carbon fiber tips. They look 
fantastic, by the way. To prep this system, move the active fuel management motors over to the X-pipe. They don't actually do anything in this new configuration, but they're allowed to move freely and reinstalling them and connecting them prevents a check engine light from occurring. Next, transfer the active valve motors onto each of the mufflers. Part five, install your new catback exhaust on the C8 Corvette. Again, this may vary depending on what you're exactly installing. For the fab speed, what we did was the first installed the X-pipe. Make sure you have somebody supporting the X-pipe as you bolt it back into the header slash catted downpiping. Don't forget to reconnect the plugs for your active fuel management system motors. Note, in our case, we had to remove a clip holding the passenger side wire to go ahead and lengthen that one. Then you can install both mufflers by sliding the rubber isolators onto the side hangers and then bolting them up to each of the rear hangers. At this time, you'll also be connecting the X-pipe together using the supplied clamps. Of course, don't forget to plug in your active valve exhaust motors and make sure to keep everything just a little loose in case you need to make some minor adjustments. Part six, high wing spoiler install. Now, if you're not doing anything with your spoiler, go ahead and skip to part seven and reinstall your rear bumper cover and basically put everything back together. But in our case, American Heritage Performance was also doing a high wing spoiler swap onto Tony's Z51 Performance Package C8 Coupe. Again, this is a relatively simple job, but it's a good idea to have a friend and take your time to avoid scratching your rear bumper cover. There are only six 10 millimeter bolts holding the Z51 spoiler in place, two pairs on the outer edges and two singles in the middle. The great news is that the high wing spoiler uses the exact same bolt pattern. The bad news is that you also have to very slowly and very carefully remove the factory adhesive that's holding the Z51 spoilers four main touch points. This is the hardest and most challenging part, so make sure to take your time, and this might be one of the reasons why you want to take it to an expert so you don't have to worry about damaging your own paint if you're uncomfortable with such things. With the Z51 spoiler removed, make sure to clean off any leftover adhesive. The reason for this is that even though the high wing spoiler uses the same bolt pattern, its touch points aren't the same size. With the adhesive removed, you can now install your high wing spoiler, which doesn't come with any additional adhesive from GM. However, because the bolt studs are much longer, go ahead and remove the tail lights to get better access to reinstalling the high wing spoiler. This is also easy. There is a push pin connector and six seven millimeter bolts holding each tail light in. Then it's time to bolt the high wing spoiler into place and check fitment. Lastly, go ahead and reinstall your tail lights. Part seven, reinstall your C8 Corvette's rear bumper cover and check for fitment. This part is basically a reverse of everything you did in part one while checking to make sure that your new catback exhaust tips fit and don't have any clearance issues. Now, don't forget to reconnect the three electrical plugs that are doing all the electronics on your rear bumper cover. Then go ahead and tighten all the catbacks clamps and all the bolts connecting it to the system. Check everything for tightness, check everything for fitment. Go ahead and re-secure your rear bumper cover, all of those bolts, all of those T15 torque screws and then go ahead and reconnect your battery. I'm already a big fan of the carbon fiber tips. I think they look amazing and the FASB logo is like kind of in the shiny center part. Beautiful design and of course you can see the X pipe now that the kind of the blacked out C8 OEM suitcase is gone. So that looks good as well. It looks almost like it's got a turbo setup or something. It looks really cool. So kudos to FabSpeed for that. And the high wing spoiler is just the one to get if you're ordering a C8. In my personal opinion, that's the one that I love the most. It just looks so wicked, but without being obnoxious. All right, just any second now, we are going to hear this for the first time. Part eight, glorious engine growls. Okay guys, I just got to hear the fab speed, see it exhaust, it, it, it's awesome. Amazing, amazing first impressions on this exhaust. It sounds deep and throaty and mean, and the decibels, I saw 110, 
with just a rev, not under load. Amazing, sounds good, sounds great. Really big improvement over stock. And a big thanks to Coley and American Heritage Performance and his tech, Matt, for hosting me over the last day or so so we could bring to you this FabSpeed Axleback install <laughs> on the C8 as well as the high wing, high wing spoiler swap. Uh, definitely got to do the high wing spoiler and definitely check out this FabSpeed exhaust. I think it sounds fantastic. Tony Malillo, and this is my baby C8 Corvette. I had to order it at Malkin uh, Chevrolet in New Hampshire. I was one of the first in California, Southern California, to receive a C8. You know, my build is 287. I did a lot of research, and what I found out on the C8 is there's a lot of heat transfer in the rear end of a mid-engine car, and a lot of exhaust companies, they didn't do the research, and they, they didn't put the heat protection around the system. Fast Speed is one of the few exhaust companies that have done that, did their homework, did their research. Plus, I've owned a lot of Ferraris in the past, I've owned a lot of Porsches, and they have a really solid history with mm -hmm. those cars. And not only that, the sound. Uh, once I heard it on, on, on YouTube, I was sold. It's not too obnoxious, but it just sounds perfect to me.